After all of that, it could be over by now. Oh, wait a minute. No. Yes. I walked in this morning and everybody had moved everything and I didn't know it until I walked She's discombobulated. Hey. That's life. You need laughter. Probably not the right one. <laughs> you ready? Yes, I think so. No, no, all right. So y'all got to sing along on this. Most of you know that. Um, there's a spot in here. Here's to you, my <laughs> love, with blessings from above. Let the day begin. And you can do that by looking at someone else. Or closing your eyes and thinking of someone else. Remembering someone. Blessing someone. Here's to the babies in a brand new world. Here's to the beauty in the stars. Here's to the travelers on the open road. And here's to the dreamers in the bars. Here's to the teachers in the crowded room. Here's to the workers in the fields. Here's to the preachers of the sacred word. And here's to the drivers at the wheel. Here's to you, my love. With blessings from above, let the day begin. Here's to you, my love. With blessings from above, let the day begin. Those are your lines. You didn't, you didn't get the directions, but now you have, so ladies. <laughs> Here's to the doctors in their healing work. Here's to the loved ones in their care. Here's to the strangers on the street tonight. Here's to the lonely everywhere. And here's to you, my love, with blessings from above. Let the day begin. Here's to you, my love. With blessings from above, let the day begin. Here's to the wisdom from the mouths of babes. Here's to the lions in the cage. Here's to the struggles of the silent war. And here's to the closing of the age. Here's to you, my love. With blessings from above, let the day begin. Here's to you, my love. With blessings from above, let the day begin. Here's to you, my love. With blessings from above, let the day begin. Here's to you, my love. With blessings from above, let the day begin. Thank you, Randy. Thank you so much. And in case you haven't noticed, our musician today is Randy Burns. Thank you, Randy. And today, our speaker is Reverend Susan Dorn. Welcome, everybody. Look at the glorious day. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. I really do think that this is wonderful when we have this weather. I am enjoying it. And I hope all of you are as well. At this point in time, I light the Christ candle. And as I say every week, the idea behind lighting this Christ candle is strictly meant for it to be a visual reminder of the Christ light that is within us at all points in time. That's the whole reason for it. And here it is. And now Susan's going to do an opening prayer. I am. I am. Good morning. Good morning. So if you feel comfortable closing your eyes, I ask you to do that. And if you feel comfortable opening your hands to receive whatever blessings God shows up through my voice, blessings to you, and just take a moment. And I will start each prayer with a deep breath. 
filling your entire capacity to the love that flows everywhere and then releasing it. And right here and now, I know that each being in this beautiful sanctuary is blessed with love and joy, peace and harmony. I know that any words or music that is sung or said today opens hearts opens minds and allows love to flow so beautifully through each one of us, to each one of us. And in this very prayer I give thanks for all of those men, women and children who who we remember this Memorial Day weekend, who have fought for freedom, who have fought for love, who have fought and died. And I give them all blessings and their family blessings and I thank them I thank them for what they have done and intended to do. I give thanks for every person in the sanctuary. I give thanks for this beloved church. And I thank you God. I thank you God for the power and the presence of love that dwells in and through each one of us every day in every way. Amen. And now we are going to do the congregational song, which is Give Yourself to Love. You will find the words in, the, in your bulletin, and the ones that are highlighted in the boulder are the ones that we are singing. Well, then get up here by the mic and try and do it. Yeah, come on. Of course, we're all going to walk out if you do. <laughs> no, we won't. No, I will. And now, you if haven't you, heard him sing. If, if you know the verses, sing the verses. Yeah, gee. Yeah, you'll, you'll catch on. I did. Because <laughs> I didn't know the verses either. But we're going to do this. We're going to start with a chorus and go from there. Good we're luck with We're going to start this. with a chorus and do a verse and then a chorus. Is that right? Yep. And then another verse and a and couple choruses. Yep. So, y'all sing along here, come on. Yeah, right. <laughs> Stand up if you want to. <laughs> you must give yourself to love. Love is what you're after. Open up your hearts to the tears and laughter and give. Give yourself to love, kind friends all gather round, there's something I would say, what brings us together here, has blessed us all today, love has made a circle that holds us all inside, strangers are as family and loneliness can hide so give yourself to love love is what you're after open up your heart to tears and laughter and give yourself to love give yourself to love Love is born in fire, planted like a seed. Love can't give you everything, but it'll give you what you need. And love comes when you're ready. Love comes when you're afraid. It'll be your best teacher. The best, the best friend, friend you ever made And give yourself to love If love is what you're after Open up your hearts to The tears and laughter And give yourself to love Give yourself to love One, One more chorus. time Give yourself to love. Love, love, is love, love, is love, 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 love,
love is what you're after. Open up your heart to the tears and laughter. Give yourself to love. Give yourself to love. Give yourself a hand. Yeah. Nice job. You're 12. Yes, yes. Very good. Okay, at this point in time, I remind us all of the prayer box. And there are prayer requests on the back of all the pews. So if you have a request or a gratitude or anything at all that you want to fill this out for, please do. Uh, because today they're all collected and given to Nellie and Nellie sends them back to Silent Unity where they are prayed over in the Silent Unity Chapel for an additional 30 days. So a lot goes into this. And anything in here today goes away today. Heads back to Silent Unity. Are you doing announcements? I, yeah. I was busy watching the new dog. I see that. There's a different dog back there. I haven't had a chance to go meet the dog yet. And the dog brought a person. I see that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I haven't gone to meet the person either. Hi, person. Hi, person. What's the dog's name? <laughs> Chewy. 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 Like Chewy Baca? <laughs> okay. All right. This is going to work. This is going to work well. Okay. Here yeah. I am. I'm okay. on the wrong side of you. Well, it's because you moved the furniture and didn't tell me. Well, I don't know. Somebody came in here and <laughs> pushed everything around. God did it. God did it. Okay. All right. Good luck. Hi, gang. Hi. Beautiful day. My goodness. Beautiful minister with us. Our very own Susan. We're very own Susan. Yep. Randy's here. What could be better? Judy's here. I'm here. You're here. That's what's better. All right. Next week, June 3rd. Really? June already? Yeah, June. Jean C. Abut will be with us as our speaker. Her topic will be, darned if I know, but I will know by next week. And come to think of it, if you're here, you'll know too. Mike Test will be with us providing the music. So be here for, for them. Also next Sunday is new member service. Uh, if you're not yet a member of Unity by the Sea, but are interested in taking the plunge, there's a nifty little note in your bulletin that addresses that subject. You don't have to quit being a member somewhere else to be a member here. We're all family. And what being a member of a church or any organization means is that I'm committing that I am a part of that family. So all you need to do if you're interested in doing that is write your name on the bottom line of the little thingy and drop it in the collection bowls when they wander around. And our bottom line specialist, Judy, will gather them and get them to Reverend Jean. Be sure and come downstairs after the services. PJ, back there, has struck again. <laughs> this time with homemade chili. There are veggies and rolls and dip and stuff and crackers and scones for dessert, and all kinds of stuff down there. So come downstairs and have a little fellowship time with us after the service. That's a very fun way to get to know everybody. And we still have quite a bit of groceries downstairs looking for a new home. There's, these are slightly out of diet, date items that were pulled from the grocery outlet store before they did their inventory. There are boxes of cereal, energy jinks, cans of corn, coffee paint, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're all out of the T-bone steaks and live moon lobsters. <laughs> but it's still good product. So if there's anything down there you can use, be sure and take it home. You'll find it on the far wall downstairs, kind of worked in with our lending library. 
Did you know we have a lending library? Well, yes, we do. Have you thought about giving any of the food and family promise? I haven't talked about family promise. I know the, the uh, other organizations will not take anything that's outdated. Oh, okay. That's been the problem with this. It's kind of kind of a shame to throw. It's perfectly good stuff. So it's kind of a shame to throw it in the trash. But so, if there's anything you'd like to have, be sure and take it home with you. Um, that's it. I ran out of stuff to say. <laughs> I guess I'll just leave. Are <laughs> you trying to tell me it's my turn again? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yes, it is my turn again. We are going to now do the monthly affirmation, and you will find it in your bulletin. Cute little card with the sunshine on it and Tigger on the back. So let's do the one first for Unity by the Sea. Unity by the Sea is a vibrant, loving, energetic activity of God. And for ourselves, I am a vibrant, loving, energetic activity of God. All right. Yes, it's your turn. <laughs> Susan's sister is going to read our daily word today because Susan said she had to. Mm -hmm. When and I listen to her. <laughs> beats Always. Walking, beats walking home, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So hey, I'm driving. <laughs> okay, and I'm just getting used to this whole reader thing, so there we go. So you all are blurry to me. Okay, um, this is about wholeness today, Sunday, May 27th. I choose to live this day as a whole and complete experience. My mortal mind may be eager to focus on perceptions of lack, creating shadows across the energy of the day. Yet what a gift it is to realize that this day is whole and complete, waiting for me to discover it and appreciate its unique energy. I am one with the essence of love and abundance that is my experience of the divine. Anything that may seem to be missing is merely an illusion born of my limited human perception. Today I affirm wholeness in everyone and everything I encounter. Through my perceptions of wholeness, I feel and express the fullness of the spirit I truly am. I choose to live this day as a whole and complete experience. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Psalms 118.24. Yay. Good job. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And now Randy is going to do some music. Mm -hmm. oh, it's my humble, uh, humble belief that um, all songs are prayers in some form. Here's a little question for you. Have I told you lately that I love you? Have I told you there's no one else above you? You fill my heart with gladness Take away all my sadness Ease my troubles, that's what you do All the morning sun and all its glory Reach the day with hope and comfort too. You fill my life with laughter. Somehow you make it better. Ease my troubles, that's what you do. 
There's a love that's divine, and it's yours and mine, like the sun. And at the end of the day, let's give thanks and pray to the one. with gladness take away all my sadness ease my troubles that's what you do says it's okay if I announce her or, or I can just go sit down and she'll take care of it herself. So I think I will just pick up my little thingies here I just want you and to I will just go I away. You, I want you to be at ease and relax. I am. Okay. I know you are. <laughs> Randy, that was perfect. That was perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Lord, have I told you recently that I love you? Maybe, maybe not. Right now I'm looking for my talk. <laughs> it's in here someplace. Lord, have I told you recently I loved you? Whew. So a few weeks ago, a couple of you were here. Um, I spoke about radiant light shining constantly through us. And in introducing that idea of radiant light, I read um, a six-line prayer by James O'Day from his little book called Soul Awakening. And so I'm going to read it again because I really like it and because it talks about today's theme for me. So just, you know, settle back for a second. It's six lines. It goes by really quickly. Soul awakening, heart opening, light shining, love flowing, wounds healing, peace radiating. Six simple lines. So when John kindly asked me to come back and speak, I thought, well, I'll just take the next line. You know, be careful what you ask for. So today is about that idea of love flowing. And when, I, when that idea came to me weeks ago, weeks ago, the first thing that happened was this chorus of give yourself to love came to me. I didn't know the verses. In fact, I didn't know the verses until two days ago. But that chorus just kept there, you know? And then Randy and I were emailing back and forth, well, do you know this song for the congregation? Do you know this one? And he finally said, well, do you know Give Yourself to Love? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, kind of. So inspiration was in this talk from the very beginning. Now, it may just be me, but when divine inspiration hits, it, um, it brings up all sorts of things that I would not necessarily expect. So I thought this, because this was easily five or six weeks ago that John asked me to be here, so I thought, okay, I can do this, whip this out. No, 
I wrote it Friday and rewrote part of it yesterday <laughs> because divine inspiration was not done with me. Was not done with that idea of love for me. So give yourself to love. Now, for myself, it's not as though I'm not a loving person or a caring person or a generous person or all of these kind things, but, you know, once I went deeper, I realized it was easy to love one another. It's easier to love others. It's easy to give to others who appear to be different than me. It's easy, I said. But what happens is, what happens when someone tries to love me? What happens when someone pays me a compliment? What happens when someone gives to me? Well, here's what happens to me. I get scared inside. I feel icky. I feel um, not good enough. I go, oh shucks. For the longest time, this is true statement, I would be introduced as Reverend Susan Dorn. And I would go, oh shucks. <laughs> it's like I couldn't take it. And, and, and that's silly, but that was the truth of what was happening inside of me. And sometimes I discovered this month that I just really missed the mark from seeing where love comes from. I get embarrassed, I get sad, I get... And then I asked myself for weeks now, why? Why is it so hard to accept a compliment? Why is it so hard to accept an unexpected gift? Why? Why? And is it only me? Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so there. So what is it inside of me that still thinks I'm not good enough to receive God's love? Let alone the love of my sister let alone the love of my friends. What is inside of me? Give yourself to love if love is what you're after. Open up your hearts to the tears and laughter. And give yourself to love. So on the one hand, I could give and love more. And on the other hand, I could receive better and more. Giving, receiving, love. See this flow thing? You know, receive, give, receive, give. But I wasn't. And I, I'm guessing some others might not either. Now in o James O'Day's book, there's a commentary on each of the, the areas. So Love Flowing has a commentary by Kabir Helminski, who's a translator of the works of Rumi and other Sufi mystics. And this is what he said, one of the many things he says. Love comes, no. Love loves you without reservation or conditions. Love loves you as you are, not as you might be or should be. Love has faith in your unfolding even over lifetimes. And I might add, even and especially in rough times. We've all been taught for so many years it's better to give than to receive, but the question I have for you today and what I've been asking myself for a month is, are my receptors, are your receptors open enough to receive love? to receive God's love, to receive Spirit's love, to receive the love of your friends and family. Now this may seem like a strange off-ramp, but I'm going to go to something I know very, very well, the concept of breathing. We take air in, we hold it, we let it go. And there is no limit to the air on this planet to provide what is needed 
by every living thing on the planet. There is enough air. The quality may change from one country to another, but there is enough air everywhere present that everything on the planet can breathe and take in what it needs and let go of what it doesn't. There is enough on the entire planet. Billions of people take in air and let it go. And I believe that there is enough love on this planet, surrounding this planet, in this planet, for every living thing to experience as much love as it can hold. I believe that. Love is as plentiful as air. And you know, every spiritual teaching I've ever read talks about that everlasting love, that love beyond expectation, love beyond what we can even imagine. It is everywhere present. So, what makes us stop receiving it? What makes us think we're not good enough to take in all the air that there is on the entire planet? We're taught that it's better than to receive, but are our receptors open to receive? Are we willing to let love fill us and to let love flow? I'm going to go back to breathing for a moment. So a couple years ago I was diagnosed with moderate sleep apnea because for some reason while I'm sleeping, something in my body shuts a valve and says, oh, you're not going to get any air. And the body is smart enough to say, oh, yes, you are. And so it wakes you up, and maybe you turn over, you kick the covers off, but you, you have interrupted sleep all night, so you're not getting deep, restful sleep. And lo and behold, modern science has figured out these little machines that give you so enough air that you don't ever get into that, that space of dysfunction. It allows you to sleep. It allows you to sleep deeply. And you can wake up energized and refreshed better than you probably have, in, for me, better than I had in a long time. And I didn't even realize I was existing on less air. <sighs> Great. <laughs> so looking at love flowing, I've come to discover that I close off, off some valve inside of me that doesn't let me accept love. And I've discovered there's no magic machine that helps that. There's nothing for me to plug into except God, except spirit, except universal good. So, there's this practice, of course there's a practice. This is why I loved coming here, because I get to teach you a practice. And someday I'm going to ask John if I can come down and do like a two hour on this one. There's this practice called a fear to faith. And I'm calling it, today I'm calling it the CPAC for your internal self. <laughs> so it's a process. It's a process that you can be incredibly honest with yourself to find those little places inside of you that are saying, nope, can't, can't accept that love. Nope, nope, sorry, can't accept that love. Okay, this one can come in. But you actually start looking deeper into the process. Thoughts that you have about yourself that you may never have really been conscious of because it's that unconsciousness that stops us from accepting love from one another. And you do it in a real honest way, and you never have to share it with another living soul. It's all for you. So, here's kind of the, I'm making sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Yep, I am. God, I mean, God was very specific yesterday. No, you have to rewrite the end of this. So here's an example. First of all, you come up with a situation. What's the situation? And for me, it was, um, why do I get, I get embarrassed receiving a compliment? And then you think about the very best thing that could possibly happen if that were not true. And it would be, 
I smile and give thanks to God and say, yes, thank you. Now for me, since today's talk is about love, my quality of God for this exercise is love. As you do other exercises around this, it could be peace or forgiveness or gratitude or all sorts of qualities of God. But today, we're going to stick with love. So the scenario is I get embarrassed when I get a compliment. The best thing that could possibly happen is that internally and externally, I smile and give thanks. And the quality of God is love. Then you look at what's the worst case scenario. Well, the worst case scenario for me would be to say to that person, to that giver of love, I don't deserve this. That's not for me. I don't, I'm not good enough for love. Yick. So you find that worst thing, that worst thing that could happen to you. And then you look at that and you look at it really deep. What happens? What happens inside of you? when you feel that way? What is that quality that rears its ugly head and says, well for me in this case it says, you Susan are unworthy. I'm unworthy? Okay, that's sort of what I've just premised here. So your quality of God is love, and here you're thinking someplace internally that you're unworthy. Uh. So then you take it another step deeper, and you say to yourself, so in the world, in my everyday experience, when I'm feeling unworthy, how do I react to people? What do I do? And it will be different for everybody else, but for me, when I'm feeling unworthy, less than a good person, I take charge. Because it's like, I don't want anyone to see that. I don't want anyone to see that I feel unworthy to be a minister, to be a singer, to be a human. I don't want anyone to see that. So I will take charge of myself and I will be a leader. I will be a spokesperson. I'm going to hide this stuff. But this whole process brings you to a prayer what we call a releasing prayer. And again, you don't have to tell another soul this. And the releasing prayer for this particular situation goes like this. I release my belief that I'm unworthy. And I release my need to take control. I let go of these things. And I am grateful God, Spirit, is the love I am. I am grateful Jesus Christ love flowing in and to me allows me to be loving. Now I gotta tell you, saying it once does not work. Well it might, it might. What I've been taught and what I choose to believe <laughs> is um, the best process is saying it 70 times a day for seven days. 70 times a day for seven days. And you know, after a while that gets easy. Say it 10 times at a, at a shot. Count on your fingers. Okay, I've said it 10 times. In another hour I'll do it again. But it changes you. It changes your internal thinking. It allows you to release that unworthiness. We were none of us born unworthy as those little eight itty bitty babies that we were, we were new and fresh and expected of love everlasting. The, the curtains were drawn. We still, we still knew where we came from. And then we get older and older and older and all these, these misbeliefs and misdiagnoses of who we are comes crunching in and pretty soon, for me, I felt unworthy. Now I'm not going to tell you that I feel worthy now, but I'm better. I can be called Reverend Susan Dorn and not be ashamed. I can feel that God, God created Susan Dorn. And through all the work that I got to be led to do, I got to become a reverend. Cool. <laughs> 
Do I still feel unworthy? Sometimes. Sometimes. I can't lie. I can't. I do. So if you're willing to do that kind of work, if you're willing to just go inside, and I didn't write out the steps for you, I probably should have, but one of these days I'll come and do a class. Um, it's a simple process. What am I feeling? What's the best thing that could happen? What's the worst thing that can happen? And that's where you really want us to look at it. And in the world, when that worst thing comes to you, what is it? What kind of fear is it? Debt, limitation, death, unworthiness, lack, whatever. And then how do I respond to the world when that shows up? If you're feeling lack, how do you act in the outside world? Do you act angry? Do you lack, act afraid? Those are the things to release, to allow the flow of love to come to you so that you can give love even in greater capacities than you already do. Because I know everyone in here in this room already gives love. You give to your community, to your family, to your friends, to your pets. So here's my challenge to you. Oh, here it is. Merriam-Webster, sometimes I actually use the dictionary, says that accept means receiving willingly. Not just receiving, willingly accept. Are you willing to accept love in any capacity? So your challenge until I return, which could be six weeks, it could be a year. I challenge you to accept hugs. Mm -hmm. I challenge you to accept praise. I challenge you to accept that the very sun rising every morning is for you. It is a gift for you. That every flower that you see is a flower for you. Accept all of the divine gifts that are just just out the windows. When there's a storm brewing, go, gosh, this storm is for me. God is here for me. Spirit is here for me. Because when you can accept that, when you can accept that God, Spirit, Christ, however and whatever word you use to, to know that presence of the one has brought you here into this life for you. You are so loved. So the Bible says God gave, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed this him would have everlasting life. So what did Jesus say? Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. Love your neighbor as yourself. Allow yourself to love yourself enough to accept love on every level, in every way, every day. I want to tie back to Randy's song. Have you told Spirit recently that you love Spirit? Have you told yourself recently that you love you? Bishop Michael Curry at the most recent royal wedding said this and I love it. When love is the way, poverty will become history. When love is the way, the earth will become a sanctuary. When love is the way, we will lay down our swords and shields down by the riverside and study war no more. When love is the way, there's plenty good room. There's plenty good room for all of God's children. Give yourself to love and accept all the gifts that are just waiting for you. So let's take a moment and go into a brief meditation. <sighs> and
And if you are willing to close your eyes, I invite you to do so and relax. Let your feet be on the floor. Plant yourself right here in this very room. We're going to do a little bit of breathing. So on this inhale, breathe in radiant light and exhale and let go of frustration. As you inhale, breathe in radiant peace. And on your exhale, release doubt. As you inhale, breathe in radiant love flowing to you. And exhale, fear. As you inhale, breathe in love flowing to you. And exhale, love flowing through you. And as we continue in this meditation, consider every time you breathe in, say to yourself, love is in me. And as you exhale, I am loving. Love is in me. I am loving. Love is in me. I am loving. For this exercise is the truth of your life. Each and every one of you is guided, guarded, and protected by spirit. The Christ light shines in and through you each day in every way. And love is in you. The very center of your being is divine love, wanting to express through you. And every time you give, you are giving that essence of love, willingly, lovingly, joyfully. And with every hug, with every handshake, with every smile that comes your way, you are receiving the greatest gift of love directed to just exactly to you. And through this practice of allowing love to flow in and to and through and out of you, your souls are awakening, your hearts are opening, your light is shining. Your love is flowing. Your wounds are healing. And peace is radiating. Amen. You bring yourself on back to the room. Put your feet on the floor. And look around with love in your eyes and spy someone and just give, just receive, just be that very presence of love that you are. Amen. Now we get to do our tithes and offerings. Give yourself to love tears and laughter. So in your, in your program, there is the offering blessing. And if you will join me in saying it. Ready? Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Amen. Randy. You're not a ship. 
carry my life, you nail to my love in many, many lonely nights. I've strayed from my cottage and found myself here. I need your love. Your love protects my fears. And I wonder sometimes, and I know I'm unkind. I need you to turn to when I act so blind. I need you to turn to when I lose control. You're my guardian angel. Keeps out the cold. You're not a ship to carry my life. You're nailed to my love in many, many lonely nights. And I've strayed from my cottage, found myself here. I need your love. Your love protects my fear. And I wonder sometimes, and I know I'm unkind. I need you to turn to when I act so blind. I need you to turn to when I lose control. You're my guardian angel. Keeps out the cold. Oh, I need your love. Your love protects my fear. Let us bless this offering. It gets a tall. <laughs> Oh, and right here and right now, I hear thanks for all of these tithes and offerings, for all that it blesses Unity Church by the Sea, for all that it blesses the givers and the receivers. I am grateful for this abundance, for this life that is good and very good. Amen. Amen. Now we get to do something else. Yes, Michael is going to do the unity statement for peace. This is one of my favorite parts. <laughs> Good morning. Please join me in reading our statement for peace. It's in your bulletin. Unity stands for peace in the presence of conflict, for love in the presence of hatred, for forgiveness in the presence of injury. Unity honors the many names for God, the many paths to God, the many ways to worship God. For there is only one way and presence of God, and that God loves each one of us equally. It is therefore the position of unity to urge all nations, their leaders and their people, to turn to God by whatever the name for guidance during these challenging times and to pursue peace, not war, for this is what honors the God of all our faith traditions. Unity stands for peace in our life. And the wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them, and they shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord. 
I will not be the part of the killing of any child, no matter how lofty the reason. Not my neighbor's child, not my child, not my enemy's child, not by bomb, not by bullet, not by looking the other way. I will be the power that is peace. Circle. Uh, one thing I'd like to remind everybody of, with next Sunday being the first Sunday of the month, it's also the Sunday where we celebrate individually anything that is special to us during that month. So if it is your birthday or anniversaries or anything at all, you are very welcome to bring something to share with everyone. No, it's not your birthday. It is my no. birthday next month. John, you can make a pecan pie on my behalf. There we go. John doesn't make pecan pies. Oh. He just woofs them down. <laughs> and complains if they aren't around. So now we got to form a circle. I'm <laughs> to start here for just a, a minute of quiet as we all um, bow our heads to those people who, who we want to pray for, for people who have passed, for people who are present, who are people who are in your heart. And feel free to speak the name out loud into the circle or into your hearts and we'll just take a moment to do this in a That they have wisdom. That they have peace. So for all of these people and places and organizations that we lift in prayer, we know that love flows to them, through them, and as them. They are lifted up in that thing in the name of God. And so forth. Now we get to sing, right? I think so. Is that correct? Yeah.